let's talk about Squarespace. That's right, we have a sponsor now, and that sponsor is Squarespace. And right now, Squarespace is par partnering with TYT, our parent network, and they are gonna be offering up a 10% discount of your first trial. Squarespace is an awesome website where you can design your very own personalized websites for whatever you're working on in your life. Uh, I have some personal experience with the website. That is my girlfriend, I guess now fiance, has a blog that she documents our own travels, um, our, our life together, and it's called Have Dog Will Drive. It's wonderful, and she created it with the help of Squarespace. Before the sponsorship even occurred, she just knew that it was the place to go to create a website that was simple and user-friendly and has gotten her some readers from all over the world. So check out her blog, Have Dog Will Drive, and also head over to squarespace.com slash TYT for that 10% discount. I can't wait to see what you guys are working on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Murder with Friends, the show where friends get together and talk about the darker sides of history. I'm your host, Grace Baldridge, and joining me again, my fave, Jason Carter. Hi, welcome Grace. back to Murder with Friends. Thank you for having me back, I love the show. I texted Jason this morning because I woke up uh, in a good mood because I, rec I remember that you were on the show today and I'm so excited to get into this discussion, one that we've sort of gone back and forth on for a while ever since they announced it was going to be a show. Uh, we're gonna be talking about what you probably know is the Versace assassination or the Versace murder. Uh, I feel like that's a little bit of a misrepresentation to the entire story, so that's what we're gonna be breaking down. There's a serial killer named Andrew Cunanan uh, who was the culprit who killed Gianni Versace, but there's so much more than just that factoid that you might already know. So Jason, what are some of the themes that we're gonna be getting into today? Uh, we're gonna be talking about a serial, a serial killer, his uh, sadomasochistic um, way of killing, mm -hmm. his history, his his mentality, um, how brilliant he was as a person, his child there's so many different elements of this story, Grace, as you said, that were um, just so eye-opening, but fascinating too. And also, the death of Gianni, mm -hmm. I mean, was shocked the world. When you think of the name Versace, you know it's synonymous with power, fame, uh, sex, fashion, glamour. So those are the things that attracted the serial killer to ultimately take Gianni's life. Yeah, we're gonna be getting into it. But first, let's start with this. Versace, the name alone conjures up images of fashion and luxury. It's bold, lavish brand that remains culturally relevant to this day. In the early 90s, founder Gianni Versace was outfitting everyone on the pulse of pop culture from Elton John to Princess Diana. By 1997, he would be gunned down by one of America's most wanted, Andrew Cunanan. Months after the murder, Maureen Orth wrote this in Vanity Fair. Now the emperor lay dead, gunned down, almost mob style on the steps of his lavish Mediterranean villa, shot in the head and face in broad daylight. The prime suspect, dressed in nondescript shorts and a baseball cap, came in close for the kill, then coolly walked away along Ocean Drive. He knew very well that the act of murdering Versace would instantly catapult him to where he had always fantasized being, at the center of worldwide attention. Why did the serial killer target a fashion icon today on Murder with Friends? So this is what we're gonna be talking about. Why did a serial killer target a fashion icon? But first, let's begin with what we know of the mysterious life of Andrew Cunanan. What we do know is that he was born August 31st, 1969. He is uh, biracial, he is Filipino. And Italian. And Italian-American. Um, and he is uh, gay and the youngest of his uh, siblings. He had sort of a strange relationship from what I could find with his father and his mother. But it's really difficult to discern the fact from truth because even to his closest friends, Andrew would regularly exaggerate the truth. I read one account that he was telling his friends that his mom was a rich Jewish uh, housewife who was only staying in her loveless marriage to uh, her husband, his father, for the money, the the wealthy inheritance that he was gonna uh, come on, and that his uh, father was a general in the Filipino army. His mother was Catholic, so like none of this, <laughs> like none of this <laughs> is true. And that he was he uh, had a pilot's license and was able to pilot the Buddy Holly plane. How do you reconcile what we know about Andrew Cunanan? What is true? What is not? What have you found out, Jason? Um, well, what what I think, well, what I do know is that Andrew was very loved by his father. He was the youngest of four, as you said. His father was very, very doting. Um, they grew up in a in a small community in San Diego before his father, who was a retired Navy Navy um, Navy man, 
got a job in business and moved them to the posh community of La Jolla, mm -hmm. um, which is a part, which is a community in San Diego where Andrew grew up and, and got a taste for the finer things in life. Now, Andrew's father always best, always bestowed in him and always told him that you in life, you you marry up, you, you try to uh, acquire wealth can bring you things, people that are wealthy can do things for you. So that from a young age was laying the foundation for Andrew to, to cultivate this mm -hmm. um, this mentality of of I, I need to have, I will not do without. Uh, his father was caught for embezzlement and moved back to the Philippines where Andrew later in his teen years or I think in his early teen years would go and live with his father only to return and to really stand behind those, those values of I will not be destitute because Andrew's father left them destitute when he moved to the Philippines. I, I sort of think of the phrase get rich or die trying sure. because living uh, lavishly and Coming into wealth was something that was very important to Andrew. Sort of the, or like the term stunting, like you know, when you're right. just like showing yeah. off your wealth. Right. And 30K millies. People who act <laughs> like they're millionaires, but they don't make 30K a year. Not that there's anything wrong with making 30K a year, but. That's not, that's <laughs> great. Uh, sounds nice. Um, so. The, what he what he gets into is some sort of I don't want to say like questionable because I don't want to judge anybody, but he does uh, get into the sugar daddy lifestyle. Well, let's 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 back it up just a little bit. Okay. Let's talk about his teen years because Andrew was brilliant, mm -hmm. um, an alleged IQ of one forty seven, yeah. bordering on genius. Uh, he was charismatic. He was he was the life of the party. He was a beautiful young man, great body. Um, in his teen years, he does come out as gay, so that adds to the the flair, if you will, of Andrew. And he he was. Great with words, he could. He was well studied. His brother was on record saying that he memorized the whole Encyclopedia Britannica and could quote mm -hmm. things from different volumes. So this guy was someone who was not a feeble-minded. He was brilliant, and I say the word brilliant in in the sense that he would weave these stories of 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 lives that he would want to have. Fame and notoriety were things that that drove his his uh, psyche even from a young age. Um, friends in school. Because he went to a very, very, very exclusive high school, the mm -hmm. Bishop School in, in La Jolla, which had students that were from multimillionaire families, businessmen. So he he had the taste of what it was like to be around power, to be around uh, people who, like his father said, could do things for him. And it, it's interesting that you you bring up uh, his father because as we're going to get into like the the relationship with older rich men that he sort of sought out, that was his type for a time. Um, but also just to piggyback off what you were saying, I, I read that he was the guy at parties that if you had a painting on the wall, he could tell you uh, who the painting was by and a little bit about the history of that painting. Just Absolutely. he was so uh, he was so knowledgeable, but also really twisted. And a lot of his friends even knew, even though they liked him, that he would lie to them about and, stuff. Right, and that would be a common theme that would carry um, Andrew. That was that would be with Andrew throughout his adulthood mm -hmm. up into the Versace murders. But the, the fact being is that he might have been brilliant, but he really only held one job. One uh, actual job that we could find, which was something in a department store right. uh, that he got through his mother, and outside of that, he grows up pretty quickly. And like I touched on earlier, he gets involved in like the sugar daddy right, scene. Right, with Norman Blashford, who was in La Jolla and in the San Diego area, a very wealthy tycoon. He's young though; like Andrew right. was young when this is going on, right? And Norman was seventy-two, so he he knew that older men, older closeted gay men, or older mm -hmm. openly gay men would be attracted to him because he was young, he was in shape, he was beautiful, he was charismatic, he was fun. You know what I found out too, is that apparently he was running in in the circles that he wanted to be running in, where he was a member of this really private, um, secretive Republican- Gamma uh, Mu. Gamma Mu, uh, this secret group. Of Closeted, closeted Washington officials, yes. and they would have these really lavish, high-end uh, get-togethers. And Andrew just found his way in there using a, a, a different last name. So I guess you can say an alias. De Silva. De Silva was his. He would say he's Andrew De Silva, and a lot of people would would know him until uh, he was America's Most Wanted as Andrew De Silva. Yes. Like his identity was concealed again, even from those he was closest to. Another thing that I've heard from people is that, that he was a really good listener, and he would really listen to you, and then you would. Recognize that you didn't really know that much about him, um, except for the stuff that he wanted you to know. So he wanted you to know about the fantastic oysters that were eight hundred dollars that he'd had last weekend. But then you'd be like, I don't. Does he have his brother? I have no idea about his siblings. It's right. weird. People like that. People who are hiding something that are that are that brilliant are constantly in the stage of or in the in the mode of I have to always 
project this personality. So the less you know about me, but what you can see that I'm giving you is all you need to know. It's like uh, not keep your enemies close, keep your friends close, keep your enemies mm -hmm. closer, but um, everything's on a need to know basis. Also, to supplement some of his income, he was selling pharmaceuticals to to people yeah. in and out of the gay the gay community where he was living, and then also at these parties. So if you need to get Vicodin, Oxy, any kind of party drug, Andrew was the go-to guy for that. Yeah, I, I you know what's kind of funny is I feel like we're gossiping about. It. <laughs> I know. Like, I feel like we're talking so shit about Andrew. And, Andrew, did you hear <laughs> he's selling drugs? You know, <laughs> which is fine. I'm totally cool to talk shit about serial killers. Like that's totally that's fine. why we're they here. They deserve it. Uh, let's jump into okay. when this murder spree begins, and I would characterize it as a spree because it's such a condensed period of time. Uh, April 1997 to May 1997, and then we'll jump into July, which is when the murder of Gianni Versace uh, occurred. But what happened? With these these first murders, there are four people that are killed by Andrew Kanan, and they are uh, Jeffrey Trail, David Madsen, Lee Miglin, mm -hmm. and uh, William, Re Reese. Uh, William Reese, and they're killed for different reasons. And I, I think that we can examine that. So the first two that we know of are uh, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Trail and David Madsen. These were two very close people in Andrew's life. Extremely close. Jeffrey, race. I've I've heard that he uh, referred to Jeffrey as his brother, and then David Madsen was apparently his. Uh, Long lost the love, love of the his love of his life. life. He had a photo of David on his refrigerator even after they'd broken up. They ex they uh, experimented together sexually in a way that Andrew felt was the closest to full gratification that he'd ever experienced with he and David. And then uh, Jeffrey was just. It sounds like Jeffrey just really put up with this bullshit and just had the patience of a saint. But both of these people prior to the murder had said, "We're done with you, Andrew." And, that, and therein lies the the ball that gets rolling because Andrew rejection was something that. He could not stand. He hated being rejected because he tried and he tried so hard, and he was so forthright in making mm -hmm. sure you liked him, making sure he said all the right things, making sure he looked good, making sure that he was always seen as better and not other. So when Madsen and Trail, who were two men of, of substantial substantial uh, accomplishments, they you know um, Trail was a graduate from Annapolis. Madsen was a this this. Architect that was on the verge of doing mm -hmm. wonderful things in his career, whereas Andrew really didn't have a purpose. And to those two guys, when the jig was up, they realized that Andrew offered nothing in the sense of companionship, in the sense of of just being a friend. It was always take, 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 take. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Trail was was very close to to Andrew, but Trail also knew that Andrew staying in his life was just siphoning. The, 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 the positivity out of his life. And that's why both of them decided to cut ties with them. And like I said, rejection was something that Andrew was not gonna tolerate and was unacceptable in any way, shape or form. So he kills them and this is as close to premeditated as I can as I can discern, because he gets a one-way ticket to Minneapolis, which is where they both are at this time. And from this point on, it's sort of like a, a point of no return. He sort of decides that he's gonna be a murderer on the run now, because his whole life is just, it's just gone. He sort of commits after these two killings that this is how, maybe he got a gratification from it, maybe it, it fulfilled some sort of a fantasy, maybe it was the ultimate power trip. Um, I, I also think that there was a certain level of getting away with it and then hearing about it on the news that he made maybe felt accomplished, mm -hmm. um, but he then proceeds to kill Lee uh, Miglin, uh, and this is an this is an older gentleman, someone he's not really close with. What do we know about Lee Miglin and this this murder? Lee Miglin was a very prominent, very wealthy, very powerful sh uh, Chicago tycoon um, businessman. Mm -hmm. So. so we have to go back to Norman Blashford and why and why Andrew decided to leave California because at this time Andrew was no longer in demand. He had he had let himself go. He was sloppy. He was in and out of the club scene. He wasn't in shape anymore. All the things that were affording him the attraction from these men to to be there to be his sugar daddy were gone. <laughs> It was a wrap on Andrew. They they moved on to younger, fresher prospects. So Andrew, realizing that everything that he was, he was no longer decided to in a one in a last ditch effort to reclaim some sense of of happiness, some sense some sense of his former life. After the after the Madsen and Trail murders, he 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 does go to Chicago, but there there's really a lot of. Um, Unclear information as to why he killed Lee and the way he killed Lee, but some will say that him and that him and Lee were were really close. They would hang out, they would drive around Chicago and pick up other rent boys, mm -hmm. have sexual encounters with them, and then 
they, they would be done with it now. And, and it kind of leans on the fact that that might be true because Andrew, as we know, steals things from Miglin after the murder and makes himself comfortable in the home, knowing yeah. where things are, knowing where Price possessions are. So the, the Miglin family has never ever, has never ever um, admitted to this. And even to this day, they still say no. My father, Duke, the son says, no, my father did not have any kind of sexual relations with this man. And, and, and the same with the, with the wife, Marilyn. It's, it's interesting. I think that uh, what we see is the later two murders, William Reese next, uh, they seem less crimes of passion and personally motivated like the first two and more opportunistic uh, murders. But there's still that level of intimacy with the murder of uh, Lee Miglin because they did hang out. I mean, they're, they've been, they are witnesses that have seen them together. So like they they did have some sort of a friendship or whatever you wanna call it. But then when we move on to William Reese, that was a guy that he just wanted his car. Right, and it was a functional murder. It was a functional murder. And it's just, it's interesting to see the devolution of Andrew Cunanan as he goes from, uh, you know, I'm not sure what he was thinking when he was killing his, the two people closest to him. And then he's like, all right, I can get away with this. Maybe I can just make this my lifestyle now and I can steal from wealthy people and I can get away with it and I can just move around and travel around and I can get this guy's car and who's gonna connect me to it? Right, uh, the way, well, let's talk about the way he murdered mm -hmm. Trail and Madsen. First, he Trail was bludgeoned with a hammer, wrapped, wrapped in a, wrapped in a uh, car, Carpet yeah. and left there. Madsen returns to the apartment after walking his dog to be held to be, to find trail and also to be held captive by Kunan for two days, or they say two to three days, before being driven out to a um, remote lake and shot mm. three times, twice in the twice twice in the back and once in the head, and then left for dead. From there, he go he goes to Chicago, meets Miglin, murders Miglin in a way that the FBI calls a, a crime of passion because not only does he stab him multiple times, he slashes his throat, wraps his head, and I, I think it was saran wrap or some kind of wrapping yeah. because Andrew allegedly was very deep into into leather, sex and bondage or sadomasochistic mm -hmm. behavior. So I. I, I kind of think Grace that he did have a relationship with Lee because the way he killed him was was so that type of murder you you, you had to think about it. it wasn't like he just walked into someone's house and, and just found something to kill him he actually had to think about how he wanted to punish Lee mm -hmm. because a lot of people say that Andrew was on this this tirade of punishment he was getting revenge he was he was um, holding people accountable for something. Yeah, I, I I do think it's kind of murky though, because in a lot of the coverage you'd see people bring up his involvement in the S and M scene, and a lot of people were saying he's a total misrepresentation of the S and M scene, and uh, he was a, a prominent dominatrix within that community, or dominate I dom I I know so little uh, in the community, but um, when you see the news coverage, like he was a gay. S and M, it's all this, star. yeah, just furthering all this sure. stigma against something that people don't really know that much about. Right. I mean, he's a crazy serial killer. Let's <laughs> leave it at, like that. he did a serial killer shitty thing, and we can you know speculate on some stuff, but I, I don't want to get too much into uh, what is sexual. Sure. I well, don't know, right. but maybe we should. What we're gonna leave up on this segment is those were the four murders leading up to the killing of Gianni Versace. And in part two, it's what you came to hear. We're gonna tell you about the murder, the assassination of Gianni Versace by Andrew Cunanan. Stay with us.